Kick it. Hey everyone, Surreal Canine here. Welcome back for more. Disc Guy 3, Absence of Detention. In the last episode, uh, Jeffrey revealed to us that he was, in fact, the superhero Aram. Let's go into more detail. Unable to find a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clown. What about the blue Mal near the vault? What about him?
Oh boy, this can't be good. Well, Ralka would be proud of him. <laughs> Destroy the world! Seen right through him all nice. <laughs> no good. The balance of taste is getting off kilter. Was it because of the gratuitous release of potential without consulting the recipe? Yeah, probably. Also, Aurum. At this rate, our precious dish will turn out repugnant. <laughs> repugnant. Could this have been a part of his plan as well? The way he says that just sounds so funny. No! Oh, how could I let this happen? Chapter 7. An eye for an eye. All right, here we are, Chapter 7. Let's see what everyone has to say. Master Overlord is alive, but the superhero who came to feed him is alive too. Isn't that weird, dude? And he's human, but he's lived so long. That's a miracle too? Don't sell a miracle short. It'll bite your ass off, dude. <laughs> Don't go to human world, dude. If you do, we'll be in an all-out war with them. We'll explode. It's all through peace talks, dude. Oh, resolve it with a face-off? Princess? I'm just joking. I'd be super worried if the human world is blown up. You went to the senior classrooms, meow? I heard from the senior there's a cursed item there. Our students should all be cursed, meow. If you're praying for other people's unhappiness, you can't call yourself a real badass. For some reason, there's chaos in the dimensions and we can't go to the dean's office. I wanted to clean it. Stop cleaning without permission. <laughs> you're attacking the human world? You silly fool. Even if you're an honest student, I won't allow it. If you do such a tremendous thing, it's bound to end up backfiring. And I hate backfires. Are you, like, just a demon who happens to have Sensei for a last name? <laughs> you have seen right through him again, Almaz. A delinquent has to believe in the seniors no matter what, Gee. And what if they betray you? Trusting is an act that will only make it end up making you feel stupid. I'm on standby for senior orders. I hear there might be an all-out war with the human world. It's easy to come in from their side, but it's hard going from this side. I hear the Overlord restricted it. That's why we were able to come in so easily. When should I get back? Hmm, Mr. Jeffrey was the superhero. His betrayal is detestable as a hero. So lovely. I kinda want his autograph. His autograph is worth nothing! <clears throat> okay, that is the last time I do voices for you guys because it's kinda hurting my face. Treasure chests! There is one up here that we can sort of reach by doing that. Get an emerald staff. You get an elegant coat. Good times. Oh, <laughs> there's one all the way up there. I don't think we can do anything about that one. Without the uh, Birdman Watchers Club anyway, which I do have, but you, the player, will probably not have that at this point in time. I only have it because I am from the future. 
get it. Dude. Yeah, I'm not getting that. <laughs> but that's kind of what you have to do there. Shut up on the quotient. I thought this might happen, so I connected a path at least in the human world too, dude. Alright, you're pretty good for a printy. You shouldn't have done that. Chapter 7, an eye for an eye. Let's go, 7 1. How about the tickle button? <laughs> Oh snap! Respect points! Yeah, this is just kind of confirming what was made pretty obvious in Chapter 6. He's not just worried about you, Mal.
I don't know about that. I've already beaten you, like, twice before. Spoilers. Okay, now that that lengthy uh, cutscene is over, we have a new species of demon, the Basile. They are a huge reference to Doom, probably. Demons summoned from another dimension sometimes get extra attacks. Normal attackers occurs twice if attacking without moving. As you can see, they have high hit and attack, which is, I guess, interesting, I don't know. Their basic attacks apparently have a range of 5, so watch out for that. They have Close Buster, Extinctor Cannon, and their Magic Change attack is Launcher Punch. This is not a rocket. <laughs> and Fox is trying to distract me by talking about Digital Homicide. Uh, they have apparently uh, been gaining some notoriety as of late. I have no comment. <laughs> anyway, we're just going to kind of rush right through here because these guys, they refuse to leave their geo panels, and we can use that to our advantage. Enemy turbo times three, so it is our, in our interest to stay out of their line of sight. That, that is in their line of sight. We want to be here. Death blow. Ooh, fancy. Okay, I don't know what I was doing standing, but I guess that works. <laughs> now that that's been taken care of, I will probably get shot. Yeah, you. You moved off of your thing. Way to go. There. You are brilliant. I will say that. Right, who can I... Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Let's just uh, send out whoever. Experiment. Space dollars. We've gone to spa from space monkeys to space dollars. My capitalism is hey. upgrading. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but it's a thing I have said. Uh, can I, uh... I can't. Okay. Well, it was worth a shot. Let's, uh... You're going down, dude! Where is Carmen? Let's get her out here. Ooh. Yeah, these red, uh... These red numbers on the panels just mean that, uh... It is a one-hit kill, regardless of uh, your character's attack or the enemy's defense. That is what the death blow panels do. They're kind of overpowered a little bit there. Uh, 
Actually, there's really no reason for me to... Uh... Well, first of all, let's take out these two. And sorry I'm being so quiet, I just really have nothing to say at this point. <laughs> My guys are so powerful that we're kind of just making short work of everything for no particular reason. Cutscene time. That doesn't sound too good. Why does your body look so physically in need of adjustments? Do you have a fever? Feeling dizzy? Any coughs? Want elective surgery? I'll fix you up with an immortal body. <laughs> I respectfully decline. <laughs> it has to be a cold. Here, drink this. It's a special zombie juice I made. It'll boost your stamina, supposedly. Gross. Oh my, you're shivering, hero. If you'd like, please take the sweater knitted from Corpse's back hair. Double gross. Oh, then I will make you a thousand cranes so that you will rest in peace. Not gross. Still kind of morbid, though. Th thanks, but your thoughts are more than enough. Almas, you shouldn't push yourself. A healthy body is a hero's most precious asset. I'm fine. I'm always prepared to sacrifice this body for you whenever it's needed. I, Almas von Almendine Adamant, hereby pledge my... Fool, I said you can't do that. Don't speak of dying so freely. And I thought I told you... I would be saddened if you died, didn't I? You heard her, Almaz. Don't make your girlfriend sad. That would not be very good. Yeah, I'm sorry. But you know, even if you die, I probably still won't be able to cry. Aww. I want to cry, but I can't. It's an incredibly miserable and sad feeling. So, don't die. I don't want to feel that way. Princess. Don't worry. I won't die. I won't do anything to make you sad. <laughs> you really won't die? Do you promise? Yes. <laughs> promise? There's no such thing as a hero who'd keep a promise. Mal? Man, the mood was set in everything. You need to learn how to sense the atmosphere. Um, Mal? I don't plan on dying, but if, just if, something happens to me, take care of the princess for me. Almas? <laughs> what are you saying? Are you sure you're thinking straight? Maybe you really do have a fever. Mal's personality is pretty twisted now. It's probably not a good idea. Yeah, did you hope to make a promise with me? The one guy who hates humans and heroes more than anything? Promises are worthless. What meaning do they have? It's not a promise. Mal, I trust you. Trust? That's disgusting. You do know I'm about to go destroy your world, right? What's your angle? It's not supposed to go at an angle! Well, sadly, I don't have much time. Huh? All right! <laughs> your title is already mostly demon. You don't think you can hold on to your sanity once you turn completely into a demon, do you? Oh, you knew? Well, yeah, that's about right. When the time comes, I'm counting on you, Mal. Trust, huh? But a weak, defenseless heart. But that heart is what makes the taste so rich, don't you agree? <laughs> what? 
when did you how could I let someone take my back? <laughs> we can both say that we haven't shown our true powers yet. I hope you don't underestimate me. Hmm. Looks like we both have our situations. What's a man like you doing helping the overlord's son? A man needs no reasons to help another man. Just leave it to your heart's belief. My heart's belief? Indeed. During our previous battle, no matter how much potential Mao brought, you should have won through actual skill. The reason you lost was because you believe the power of friendship outweighed your sheer power. Am I right? A demon is one who normally lives in the carefree freedom to follow their heart's content. Your powers will inevitably be cut in half if you live in a conformed way. Since when have you demons been altering your honor student lifestyles to conform with those of delinquents? That must have allowed him the chance to gain an advantage over all of us. At least that's what I think. Boom! Who are you anyway? <laughs> I'm just the cook. He's just the cook. I think there's a TV trope about that. It is called Almighty Janitor. I have a character like that. His name is Sigmund. Anyway, that is going to be all for this episode. Quite a uh, lengthy batch of cutscenes there, but we are making pretty good progress. Next time, we are going to continue playing a video game and keep journeying towards the human world. See y'all next time. Bye-bye.